there'll be hits of a different sort this Christmas as well. This sort. Because despite the shortage of cardboard to produce the sleeves and vinyl to actually produce the records themselves, the British recording industry reckoned that this Christmas something like 20 million discs will be sold. And this continued interest in buying records means that the industry can pay great attention to improving the quality of the records themselves. Quite a sound. And yet, when you hear something like that on the radio or the record player, you get no idea of the technological nightmare that went into producing it. And yet, pop music starts very simply. Invariably, it involves one instrument and one voice working out the melody. Take that chap in there, for instance. You're on. I've been thinking back to times when I was younger than I am. I didn't believe that I'd grow up so soon. I only dreamt of driving trains and riding motorcycles. Well, promising, I suppose, but you'll never make the top ten. Not without a little echo. How about some bass? Bring in some drums. That's nice. Now we'll fatten up the rhythm section a little bit. Starting to happen now. now. Why don't we give him another voice? Put in some more guitars. Bring up a little honky tonk piano. It's really beginning to sound quite nice. How about what I call uh, electric chops? That's not bad at all. Now, like almost all pop recordings, this one was recorded with each part put down separately on a wide two-inch tape. The job now is to mix all the instruments, all the parts together, to produce the sort of sound that you like to hear. And that's no easy task, because the balance of a top pop changes throughout the number. Occasionally, the bass will have to be brought up, the drums perhaps brought up and then brought gently back again. To the recording engineer who's going to do a good job, balancing a pop record is a feat of dexterity and memory. But quite apart from the balance of the sound, each of these controls here alters the texture of the sound, makes it more toppy, more bassy, fatter or thinner. The recording engineer has got to know the setting that he needs on each of these controls every second throughout the number. The amazing thing is, it can be done. But in the quest for even higher standards of artistry, technology can now provide the overburdened recording engineer with another pair of hands. This mixing desk is connected to what is in effect a small computer. Each of the movements on the balance controls of this desk are read by the unit, converted into digital information, dots and bleeps, which then become part of the original recording. Now, you never hear these dots and bleeps, but what they do is enable this desk to reproduce that original rough mix that you've just been listening to and which we've already fed into here over and over and over again, reading the instructions off the tape. On each occasion, the recording engineer can go through the individual instruments improving or making whatever changes he feels are necessary, knowing that the unit will not forget the original mix that he set up. I'll show you what I mean. Now, there's our original mix. I'm now, just for a second or two, going to concentrate on the drums alone. So I move their faders up, and two red lights on the desk tell me when I hit the original level. I now tell the machine that I'm going to update the information on the drums. Let's take them out altogether. The machine will now remember that at this point in the number, the drums have to come out. I don't think that's much of an improvement, so we'll put them back in again. There we are. And tell the machine to go back to the original program. Now, how about the bass? There's the original level. Tell the machine we're going to update and we'll bring the level of the bass up. Have the teacups rattling, so we'll bring it back just a little bit. Leave it like that, and we'll move on to the two guitars. Up they come, there's the original level. Tell the machine we're going to update the guitars, and we'll bring the level up a bit higher, perhaps. Yes, I think so. Back a little bit. 
Now, it doesn't matter if I make any mistakes, because the machine will always remember the original program or the improvements for as long as I want it to. Now, because this unit operates on impulses, it's possible to see on an oscilloscope how my mix is building up. So, let's wind the tape back to the beginning and see how we're getting on. Each of these little bars rising up the screen represents one part of the recording. The higher up the screen it goes, the louder that part will be in the final mix. I met a man who said I'd make an entertainer What do you do when you promised everything in the world? Do you jump at the offer and take it? Or say no thanks and never have the chance again? The happy result of all this should be a better end product all round. The engineer is left under no strain, free to produce a more polished performance. And from the musician's point of view, well, if the record's a hit, he can take the credit. If it's a flop, he can always blame a computer. No, I 